First of all, thank you very much for the invitation to join this uh, meeting. And uh, <clears throat> I would uh, start this um, meeting with a, uh, the presentation about the lifestyle intervention in the prevention of type 2 diabetes, which has been discussed for a long time. Uh, my commercial interest here, uh, the long time I mean, it's a hundred years uh, where we have a published data on the need for the prevention of diabetes. And that was actually uh, almost exactly 100 years ago when Dr. Choslin pointed out that at the present time, we should devote attention not only to treatment, but uh, to prevention. So only 100 years gone. But what was missing was that uh, we need to know how to organize prevention. What is a disease? What are the risk factors? What is history of natural history of, of a disease development and uh, how to handle this at the population level? And then we need to demonstrate that the intervention actually will work. And after that, we can implement uh, public policies and so on. So there are many steps. Dr. Jocelyn started to discuss the need, but there were many aspects that were not known. We scientists, we are providing facts, but it doesn't mean that this will change the behavior or culture and, and, the, and the way how people are seeing the world. Because there are so many different aspects that we have to understand. Uh, uh, diabetes starts with the genes. It starts with the environmental factors, behaviors, and then their complicated uh, uh, epigenetic uh, effects that combine both genes and behaviors and lifestyle. We know about the risk factors. Especially, we agree about the modifiable risk factors. Of course, there are many other factors as well. Uh, today, uh, maybe we should pay more attention to sleep, depression, pollutants, uh, microbiota, and so on. But still, we have information about the main factors that can be modified. But there are many other factors. So if we start prevention, does it mean that we have to change or control all these factors? All of them, not easy. The answer is that we have to have a proof of concept that prevention works and why? Uh, to do it, it requires a clinical trial because only with a clinical trial, we can answer uh, uh, the, the question clearly. We can avoid biases. Biases are always in the observational studies, but with proper randomization, we can avoid it. The Daqing trial was the first one really to uh, come up with the data that uh, diabetes prevention with a lifestyle works, but it was not based on randomly allocating individuals. There were 35 clinics that were randomized into one of these four groups. Uh, nevertheless, the results were looking very, very convincing, about 40% reduction in a risk of diabetes, whatever it is. So at the same time, when the Daqing trial was ongoing, we designed the Finnish Diabetes Prevention Study, where we picked up 
to our understanding, the five most important factors that need to be controlled for and the weight reduction in obese, fat intake reduction, fiber intake increase, and physical activity uh, increase. And we randomized individuals uh, into the intervention and the control group. Uh, it was quite a simple uh, intervention program. Seven counseling sessions during the first year and every three months thereafter. We provided free of charge gym for those who wanted to have it, but we promoted physical activity in any other ways. Uh, but you have to remember that uh, also the control group received uh, uh, healthy uh, lifestyle advice uh, in the beginning, and, uh, and therefore uh, they were not left alone. Nevertheless, when we looked at the data for the first time on the incidence of diabetes, we observed that there was a 58% reduction in the incidence uh, in the lifestyle intervention group compared with the control group. And also we observed that uh, the difference between the groups started to appear very early on uh, during the study. So two things, huge reduction in the incidence of diabetes and that lifestyle intervention works almost immediately when you start applying it. Then the DPP in the US came up one year later uh, with exactly the same results. And so did uh, the study in the Netherlands and in Newcastle. Uh, these applied our protocol. The Darching trial earlier on, as I mentioned, about 40% reduction. And in India, uh, about 30% reduction. Why lower? That is because statistics lies. Uh, we are talking about a relative risk reduction. And in both populations in China and India, the incidence was much, much higher in a both group, both control and the lifestyle intervention uh, than in the other studies. And therefore, when you calculate the ratio uh, between uh, intervention and control, of course you get a lower relative risk reduction, but look at the absolute curves. They are identical in all trials. And this is what is a public health message. You have to look at the absolute terms. Now, when several studies have been uh, carried out, there is a possibility to carry out also a meta-analysis, what happens. And these studies uh, showed us six, to, six months to two years and observed 31% risk reduction. Most of the trials were very small and could not uh, uh, achieve a statistical significance alone, but altogether very clear effect. And those trials that lasted for three years or more, 37% uh, risk reduction. And if you look at the, uh, 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 the data of the individual studies, every single one had a positive effect of a lifestyle intervention. That is, uh, the uh, estimate is on, on, on the left side. Uh, there is some variability between the trials, but not, not very much. Now we know that people who have uh, impaired glucose tolerance that were included in these trials uh, develop a diabetes uh, at the rate about 50% in, in 10 years. Uh, the IGT, people with IGT, uh, have a very, very high risk of having diabetes. Now, what about the other ways of identifying so-called pre-diabetes? Uh, that is uh, impaired fasting glucose or uh, high 
risk uh, A1C uh, that has been proposed uh, also. However, these identify different people. People with IgT, only small proportion have a impaired fasting glucose or a high A1C and so on. So only very, very few people have all three uh, categories of um, impaired uh, glycemic regulation, uh, whatever way you are, we, we, are, we are pronouncing it, that is the ABC category. The first trial using uh, fasting glucose uh, to recruit individuals uh, into a lifestyle intervention trial was in Japan, published one uh, or 10 years ago. And the results showed a 44% risk reduction uh, in the lifestyle intervention. But this is not the whole truth because only people who had a combined IFG and IGT benefited from uh, lifestyle intervention. Again, they had uh, the 59% risk reduction similar to other trials we had, while people who had isolated impaired fasting glucose did not benefit at all from lifestyle intervention. Okay, we can discuss why this is uh, the, the case, and we don't know yet, except that, of course, the pathophysiology uh, is very different. Now, the proof of a prevention concept of type 2 diabetes prevention is there. What is next? Uh, the one issue is uh, if you have a short period of lifestyle intervention, what does it mean for the rest of our life? In our case in Finland, intervention lasted for about four years. And then during another uh, 11, 13 years of, um, of uh, follow up, where we examined people every year, we could observe that the uh, difference between the groups remained, even became larger uh, in the post-intervention period uh, with the hazard ratio of 0.61. So it seems that uh, lifestyle intervention for a short period of time will have a lifelong uh, benefits. And it has been proven again with a meta-analysis uh, where approximately 20% risk reduction uh, has been observed when all the trials have been combined. Unfortunately, this analysis is uh, uh, um, confused by the US uh, Diabetes Prevention Program Observational Study, where everybody was offered either lifestyle intervention or metformin. So it was not really a, a follow-up uh, in a way like the other studies where no intervention was provided. What is important is the early intervention effect. Uh, we have been able to show uh, that uh, during the first year, the benefits uh, actually are the most important. If people are able to change their body weight, uh, during the first year, their risk is really reduced dramatically. Uh, and uh, if they don't, uh, that means that uh, the outcome of the, of the study or, or the program is not very good. So this is something which uh, uh, is very important. In our case, there was about 5% uh, risk reduction uh, in body weight uh, during the first year in the intervention group and about one uh, in the control group. But up to 10 years, the intervention group kept their body weight lower uh, with the lifestyle intervention they practiced. And 
when we looked at the lifestyle factors like uh, fat intake, fiber intake, uh, we could see that uh, the effects that were observed during the intervention period uh, were kept even after the intervention was over. One year post-intervention, four year post-intervention period, you can see that there's a huge difference between the intervention and the control group in the total fat, saturated fat intake, and increase in fiber, and the total carbohydrates. No change. Why? Because that was not part of the, our intervention. And actually, fiber is part of uh, carbohydrates. Now, <clears throat> these results should be used for uh, implementing uh, programs uh, in, uh, in, in a national level or a community level. Okay. Finland was the first uh, about 10 years ago starting a uh, diabetes prevention program nationwide and collected data from a different uh, uh, regions uh, to see what happens uh, during a short term uh, intervention program carried out in the primary care clinics. And compared with uh, those individuals uh, uh, that had a high risk of diabetes, remained stable weight, those who lost 5% or more uh, body weight had about 70% lower risk of diabetes. This is only one year. Now we have a 10 year data and uh, results are remaining. But important is that uh, when we compare the clinical trial data with the primary care data, they are identical. Again, those who are uh, gain, gaining weight uh, and having a high risk of diabetes, their diabetes risk is increased here in the, in the right side. Those who are losing weight, uh, they benefit in terms of uh, the risk reduction uh, for the incidence of diabetes. And there is a linear relation between that. We have to admit that this is a key issue. Uh, also, in the US diabetes prevention program, they show that the early response was the most important uh, issue, uh, whether in a, in a placebo group and especially in a lifestyle intervention group. You can see that uh, when people uh, reduce their body weight early on, uh, their risk of uh, diabetes in the long run was uh, the least. And uh, in, the, uh, in, in the US uh, diabetes uh, prevention program, those individuals who reached actually normal glucose uh, uh, during the short term uh, trial period of three years, they had much, much lower uh, rate of uh, developing diabetes compared with those who never reached uh, normal glucose uh, early on in the trial. So to lose weight early and actually to reduce uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, risk of diabetes, uh, they are interlinked. Now, how does uh, genetics come into the picture in diabetes prevention? Uh, Jim Neal uh, pointed out that there might be a, a certain genotype, he called a thrifty genotype, that may be uh, in a families or individuals uh, uh, that are prone to diabetes. And this genotype has been useful uh, in the earlier uh, periods in, in a human development, but no longer so, because now we have a plentiful of food and little physical activity. And therefore, uh, these are uh, causing 
uh, a problem to the people who have a, um, uh, this sort of genes. Now, when we looked at the uh, family history in the diabetes prevention study in Finland, we saw that uh, both in, in the individuals who had a negative family history or positive family history, in both cases, lifestyle intervention work very well. So actually, uh, it's proving a point in, in the way what uh, Jim Neal pointed out, that if you have a family history, then you can benefit from lifestyle. And looking at the specific uh, gene markers like this TCF7L2, uh, we could show that those individuals who had uh, inherited from both parents a T allele had a highest risk uh, uh, in the control group uh, and uh, in the intervention group, uh, these individuals benefited dramatically. They had a six times lower risk of diabetes compared with the control group individuals. So this is not the only gene. Another one here in a control group, uh, uh, this uh, alpha-2 beta adrenergic receptor uh, uh, gene polymorphism uh, GLU-99 homozygous had the highest incidence uh, while in the intervention group, they had the lowest incidence of diabetes. So again, showing that uh, it is uh, important to modify uh, uh, the lifestyle in high risk individuals. But these nine, nine uh, homozygous individuals, uh, they benefited from uh, diet. Uh, on the left side, on the right side here. And uh, in, in the left side, the left panel, you see that they did not benefit from uh, uh, lesser time physical activity at all. So- Professor Tomelito, sorry to interrupt. Can we uh, try to wrap up in one minute? I would be grateful. Okay, yeah. So there are issues, uh, other studies that have looked at the genetics and uh, and the lifestyle, uh, this large epic interact showed that whatever was the, uh, the lifestyle uh, and whatever was the uh, genetic uh, risk score, uh, people benefited from a lifestyle. The Mediterranean diet has been promoted, uh, many different factors in included. We don't know exactly which one works uh, best, but what is important is that adherence, a drug doesn't work if not taken, lifestyle intervention doesn't work if people are not complying, but if they do comply, like in this case, in our study, uh, those individuals who reach actually the targets uh, of a lifestyle intervention, they all had a, a lower risk of, uh, of uh, uh, incidence of diabetes. And combining uh, all these five targets, if people reach four or five targets, nobody became diabetic. And that's the bottom line that type two diabetes is multifactorial and the lifestyle intervention works both in those who have genetically prone to diabetes and those who are less prone to diabetes. In all cases, in all situations, uh, a lifestyle is the key, but lifestyle is not the one single thing. It combines many different issues. And we have to remember to, be, uh, to point out that uh, it is important to take care of all aspects of lifestyle, not only one single thing. So thank you very much for your attention.